Hello and welcome to Access Asia. I'm Yuka Hwaye and here's what's coming up in this edition. Terra returns to Pakistan's Swat Valley. Following the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan, violence by militants has skyrocketed in the border area. Indonesia is abandoning Jakarta as its capital because it's sinking. But environmentalists fear the creation of a new capital in the rainforests of Borneo will damage the local ecosystem. And Indian cinema makes history in America. A song from blockbuster movie RRR won a Golden Globe in a first for the country. Can this give a boost to struggling Bollywood? We'll find out. It's known as the Switzerland of Pakistan, famous for its snow-capped mountains and beautiful scenery. But over the past year and a half, the picturesque Swat Valley has once again descended into violence and fear as the Pakistani Taliban, inspired by the militant takeover in neighbouring Afghanistan, retook their positions in areas along the border. Targeted killings, kidnappings and terror attacks are now a daily occurrence. In the city of Mingora, locals are doing their best to resist the insurgents. Our correspondent sent us this report. The Swat Valley is one of Pakistan's most famed beauty spots. But in recent months, terror has spread over the region. Violence has been spiked up by the TTP, an outlawed armed group that has claimed responsibility for numerous attacks and targeted assassinations in the valley. This young man's father was one of their victims. The day after his assassination, the Taliban said they had killed him because he was a member of the peace committee. They don't want people to be in touch with law enforcement and they don't want them to give information to the army. The Pakistani Taliban ruled over the Sawat Valley from 2007 to 2009 before being driven out of the region by the military. As the Afghan Taliban took power in neighboring Afghanistan 17 months ago, the TTP has also resurged. Those who do not support them are seen as traitors. This is the case for Abdul Rahim, the head of the local traders' union. He is always escorted by three bodyguards. Today, he is visiting the local bazaar to meet shopkeepers. I believe that at least 300 shopkeepers in Mingora have been approached by the Taliban for extortion purposes. They have a sophisticated system, they send personal information, giving them details about their children and the schools they attend, and then threaten to kidnap them and their children if they don't give them the money. Some of the traders here gave in to that. After numerous attacks on law enforcement and civilians, Tens of thousands of people in the valley took to the streets to raise their voice against the increasing violence. At this primary school, the teachers are concerned. Topic hey, Hazrat. Yes, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi Who is Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam? If the terrorists come back, the situation will become very bad. Schools, colleges and other educational institutions will have to close. The parents will be afraid to send their children to school. The situation will also become very difficult for women who will not be able to go out and will remain locked up at home. A similar scenario is already happening in neighbouring Afghanistan, where the Taliban took power on August 15, 2021. Indonesia is moving its capital from Jakarta and building a new one in the rainforest on the island of Borneo, more than 1,000 kilometres away. Over-extraction of groundwater, as well as climate change, have made the sprawling megalopolis of 30 million people the fastest sinking city in the world. But the planned relocation is raising concern among environmentalists who fear the impact a man-made city would have on the local ecosystem. James Mulholland reports. This is Ground Zero Nusantara, the heart of Indonesia's future capital city. It sits near the coast on the island of Borneo, on the edge of one of the oldest rainforests in the world, a treasure trove of biodiversity. The initial targets of the massive undertaking are to build a new parliament and presidential palace as well as a dam and a grand mosque. The city can, can mimic 
the forest. The man behind the mega plan says the new capital will be smart and sustainable, a city that works with nature instead of against it. We have this principle, we don't want to destroy uh, the, the natural condition. All the buildings, especially key buildings or government building, needs to be green, green building. It needs to be sensitive to the environment. It needs to use local material as much as possible. But environmentalists fear green intentions will not be enough to protect the natural wonders of the island that's known by Indonesians as the lungs of the world. Adalah ibu kota. The new capital area will be right on the boundary of the Sungai Wain protected forest area. If construction isn't well managed, this will exacerbate the existing threats on the environment. Nusantara will be located two hours' drive from the eastern city of Balikpapan in Kalimantan, the Indonesian part of Borneo, which is shared with Malaysia and Brunei. The island is home to many endangered species, including the proboscis monkey and the orangutan. As construction ramps up, activists are warning of the effects of deforestation on the island's rare inhabitants. We are focused on the biggest challenge to the future of orangutans. Their natural habitat keeps shrinking every day. Construction, because of the growing human population, is the biggest challenge. It's not just the island's unique fauna and flora that's at risk. Borneo is also home to several indigenous groups, including the Balik people. Thousands of them depend on the forest and natural surrounds for survival. Officials have vowed to respect their rights and compensate those affected by Nusantara, but many do not want to be relocated from their ancestral home. Even before this nation existed, our great-grandparents lived in this area. We don't want to become strangers in our own lands. The land is the biggest asset of our tribe. It's the source of life. If our land is taken away, how could we farm? How could we live? The new capital is scheduled to be inaugurated in 2024, bringing with it a wave of human and industrial activity into the natural surrounds of Borneo. By 2045, the government says the city will host 1.9 million residents, more than twice the region's current population. It was a triumph for Indian cinema. Natu Natu, a song from blockbuster movie RRR, won Best Original Song at the Golden Globes. The Telugu movie has been a huge hit not only at home but abroad, remaining on the global top ten list for most watched non-English films for 15 weeks on Netflix. Let's take a listen to a clip from that musical number. So could the success give a boost to Indian cinema that's been struggling to come out of post-COVID doldrums? For more, let's cross now to New Delhi to speak with Bollywood film critic uh, Tanul Thakur. Tanul, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. So first off, just why did RRR do so well outside of India? I mean, it is certainly a very over-the-top movie, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I think the international audience, especially the American audiences, were just bowled over by its, you know, sincerity, innocence, simplicity, you know, in, innocence, honesty. All, all the kinds of things, the thrills, the, the you know, the, the real cinematic uh, essence that they've been missing and have been craving from the, the summer blockbuster or the, you know, so to speak, the Marvel franchise films uh, was everything that RRR gave to them. So I think that in a way, sort of like this pure elemental cinematic thrill was, I think, a huge draw for, uh, for American audiences uh, uh, for, for a film like RRR. 
So it's full of music, full of uh, computer graphics. It is actually the second most expensive film ever to be made in India. Was it a risky bet, though, considering how Indian cinema struggled to recover from a huge loss suffered during the COVID-19 crisis? A bit, but I mean, if you know the track record of its director, S.S. Rajamouli, I would say it was a very calculated risk, if at all. I don't think largely it was a risk because he has an excellent reputation. In, in fact, his last uh, uh, film, Bahubali 1 and 2, uh, made an insane amount of money. So, you know, I mean, it was, it was uh, uh, a calculated risk, which I think uh, was bound to pay off. And it, it did pay off in a way that was just, I mean, uh, astounding, but not totally unexpected, I would say. So could this smash hit success be a sort of a turning point or a sign of more to come? I won't call it a turning point as such because, you know, it's not as if a piece like RRR is an outlier in Indian cinema. Uh, we are used to uh, stuff like this. Uh, I mean, so, so in that case, uh, it sure it brings recognition to Indian cinema and and... It, it, it sort of tells the world that there are enough films like these waiting to be discovered. But would it change really uh, things uh, with respect to, I think, the Indian commercial landscape is concerned? I have my doubts. I think I think uh, it would need something. I mean, RRR broke out especially because, because it was so fresh for the international audiences. Uh, I think I think it's, it's sort of up to them to sort of come and you know, really uh, mine the depths that just even Indian commercial cinema has to offer. Will that happen? I doubt. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll have to give it a few years to sort of see. And Tano, just very quickly, what do you personally like about this film? I, I loved its scale. I loved uh, its spectacle, uh, the melodrama, the fact that it's, it's so inherently Indian in its expression, in its... In its sincerity, in its honesty, there is there is this whole full throttle energy. Uh, there's this no holds barred uh, visual language, which can at times be just very, very Indian in its essence. Was something that really appealed to me. Well, Tanu Thakur, once thank you once again for speaking with us. Thank you. And that's it for this edition of Access Asia. Do stay tuned for more world news here on France 24.